Hi everybody. So what we're going to be looking at today is sexual dimorphism. So I want to start today by first just talking about what sexual dimorphism is. And in general, when we're looking at sexual dimorphism, it's the difference in size, shape, or coloration between males and females of the same species. Now in primates, we always see a larger male with a smaller female if we see sexual dimorphism. And there's really about three main traits that we see as sexually dimorphic. Although some species do have a coloration sexual dimorphism, we generally see sexual dimorphism as size. Males being larger, females being smaller. Now that can be overall body size, which is one place or one trait that we see. Another trait that we see has to do with a feature that we call the sagittal crest which is this big ridge of bone right here at the top of the skull. Now this is a muscle attachment piece or muscle attachment area where the jaw muscles that are on the side here come up from the lower jaw and attach at the sagittal crest. Now that gives a lot of strength to that lower jaw so that they can open and close their jaw with a lot of force. Another trait that we see uh, that is also sexually dimorphic is the canine tooth itself. Now, the canine tooth, the sagittal crest kind of work together because the larger your canine tooth, that's your fighting tooth, then the larger the sagittal crest, the bigger your muscles are also for fighting. So the traits that we see tend to be traits that would give the males an advantage in a fight male to male. Now we see three different levels of sexual dimorphism in primates starting with absolutely no sexual dimorphism, as we can see here. So these are gibbon skulls, male and a female. And what you can see here is that there's no difference in the sagittal crest. They're the same, right? You can't see a difference in the sagittal crest because neither one of them have it. They also are basically the same size, male to the female skull, no real size difference. And if you look at that canine tooth, right, right here, again, no real difference between the male and the female canine size. So no sexual dimorphism present in this species. Now the opposite extreme we see here with the gorillas, our male and our female. Right, you can see that there's a huge difference in the sagittal crest size between the male and the female, as well as hopefully you can see that there's a huge difference in the overall size of the male and the female skulls here. Now if we look at the canine size as well, let me see if I can hold both of these up for you here. You can see that the male canine is very, very large, whereas our female here, it's much, much smaller of a canine. So overall, even though they're both very large individuals, animals themselves, there's a large difference between the male and the female. So a huge or a large amount of sexual dimorphism. Which leaves us with kind of our middle ground, which is what we see here with our chimpanzees. Now you'll notice with these two individuals that we don't see a difference in the sagittal crest size. Oh, let me get a hold of her really quick. There we go. All right. So you don't see that there's really any sagittal crest difference. Now some male chimpanzees may have a small sagittal crest, um, but in general there's not a big difference in that feature. There's also not a really big difference in the overall size. When we look at the body size of these guys, it's about a 20 pound difference males being usually around 100 pounds, females being usually around 80. But when we look at the canine size, that's where you should be able to see a big difference. She doesn't want me to hold her right now, there we go. All right. You can see that there's a pretty big difference in the canine size here of the female on my right and the male. All right. So here, we don't have a lot of sexual dimorphism that we saw in the gorillas, but we definitely don't have none. So we have kind of a medium level overall. Relatively large amount if we were just looking at the canine size and small amount everywhere else. So we look at that as an overall size difference. So in general, while we score each trait individually, we also look for an aggregate of the overall sexual dimorphism in the species. And we end up with three main levels. No sexual dimorphism, whether it's an individual trait or the whole species. Some sexual dimorphism, kind of a medium level, where we see maybe some in one or two traits, but not all three. 
or just a small difference in all three traits. And then our large amount of sexual dimorphism, like what we saw in our gorillas over here, where we've got a really big difference in all three of the traits. So this has just kind of been a recap of sexual dimorphism. In the next video that you're going to watch, I'm going to talk about how sexual dimorphism links to mating pattern and social structure. So make sure you keep take a watch at that as well.